Hello and welcome to this new video. In this video, I'm going to implement two algorithms that we learned uh, last time. So the inverse transformation method and the acceptance rejection method. First, let us implement this for in the case of the exponential distribution with parameter lambda that so okay so we start by importing as usual numpy the math.lib library we import time just to test uh, two things okay uh, the first way is a straightforward and a little bit naive way uh, to implement the algorithm uh, it's not a, it's not a good style actually you'll see why but it's straightforward so let us generate 1 million uh, exponentially distributed random numbers so how to do that we, we first uh, we can define a function okay i call it exp that has a default parameter lambda equal 3 but you can take it anything you like if you if you don't precise it's by default 3 Okay, and then we apply the algorithm. So we first generate a uniform random number between zero and one, and we do that with the built-in function numpy, okay? We don't need to use any more our uh, homemade uh, generator. And then we take the minus the logarithm of this number and divide by lambda, okay? So this is the um, inverse transformation method uh, apply to the exponential okay so now we have a way to generate one random one exponential random number at a time okay if we want to generate uh, 1 million we do a loop okay so just take 3 doesn't precise anything exponential so do a loop okay let's see what happens Okay, so we took 3.6 seconds to generate 1 million exponentially distributed random number. And, okay, so we got this histogram. Okay, this is good, fine, so it works well. But it's not a good style. You will see why. Because there is a more efficient way in Python. When you can vectorize, don't hesitate. Because vectorization is much faster when it's possible. Okay, so when I do the this way, so same thing actually, same algorithm, but instead of generating one random number at a time, we generate one million. Okay, or so actually here, I took maybe more actually. So let me just put six. So it's even faster. It's zero point zero five in the vector form. Okay, so. We generate a uniform random vector of size 1 million, and then we take minus the logarithm of this vector and divide by lambda. Okay? And we draw a histogram. We obtain the same thing, actually. Okay, but with uh, much faster, actually. Okay? Because loops in Python and similar languages are very slow. Okay, so avoid loops when you can. But both are correct algorithmically. Okay, so when possible, try the second, the vector, the vectorized way. Okay, now using the built-in functions in NumPy, there is a built-in function NumPy dot random exponential that has two parameters actually. If you want to learn more, just put Shift Tab. So there are two parameters: the scale. And the size. Size is just the number of uh, random numbers you want. Okay. Uh, by default, it's just one number. And the scale. Now, the scale is the inverse of the rate. So lambda actually is the rate. The scale is what's what is sometimes called beta, right? So sometimes the exponential with parameter beta is given by one over beta exponential of minus x over beta. Okay. So don't confuse scale and rate. Okay. So if you want the parameter to be lambda, the scale should be the inverse. Okay? So pay attention to this. And if we do this, we get even a much if much faster 
uh, way, so it took 0 0.037 seconds, whereas in our algorithm it took 0 0.05. Okay, so it's even much better. Okay, but all three algorithms are correct. Okay, in the SciPy, okay, here let me, uh, I just, I will explain what I, I'm doing here. But for the SciPy, actually, uh, you can even do more because when you, okay, first, the syntax is a little bit different. So it's expon instead of ex exponential. And it has actually many arguments, okay, because it's now an object, not a function. So you import SciPy stats as STS, and this STS has a function called exponent. When you call this function, actually, you generate now not a number, actually, you generate an object which has attributes. So one attribute, as we saw earlier, is the, the ability to generate random samples from this function, okay, RVS. We already did that. And actually, there's another fe uh, feature that you can do is actually the PDF, okay? So instead of programming the PDF, you can just call it, okay? It's, it's just built in, okay? So <clears throat> here, so we did something similar, actually. And so it gives the same result in approximately the same time. Uh, although NumPy is a little faster because we uh, the SciPy stats actually uh, is more costly actually because we generated an object and then we took an attribute. So okay, so this is the syntax for the SciPy, and now uh, of course if you want to learn about a function, you just can type help. Okay, I'm going to do that now. And now, if you want to draw the histogram and the PDF at the same gram to, to compare them, okay? So, <clears throat> here, so you generate samples from the exponential distribution. Okay, now this is a vector, and then you plot this, this histogram. And now, the x.pdf is a function, actually. It's built in. It gives you the PDF of the exponential function. But if you want to draw a graph, actually, you have to, to precise a vector of input. For example, here I took a vector between minus 1 and 4, and I divided it into small pieces, actually between minus 1 and 10. And I divided it into, into 100 smaller intervals. So now this is a vector. When I draw this index against uh, it's PDF, actually, I get this graph, which is the PDF, so it's 0 up to 0, and then it's exponentially decreasing from lambda. Okay, so we see here a very good agreement uh, between the theoretical probability density and the sample. Okay. Uh, so, this concludes the first exercise about several ways of implementing the exponential distribution. Now, the second exercise, I will not correct it here. You have to do it, okay? Because once again, you cannot learn just by sitting and listening. You have to uh, get your hands dirty. Uh, it's about the Cauchy distribution. So I, I hope now you learn how to do that. So first you need to find the CDF and then invert it, okay? And then implement the algorithm for F, capital F minus one, okay? <clears throat> So you do it. It's a homework. It's good homework for you. And same thing for the Pareto distribution. <clears throat> so please, if you really want to learn uh, to master Python and to understand the stochastic simulations, uh, I really encourage you to do these homeworks on your own. It's really for your own good. Even if I don't ask you such things in the exam. Okay, but these days, as you know by now, uh, it's a big advantage uh, to, 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 to know programming languages like Python, okay? And most universities teach Python at the first year level, okay? Now, we come to the next algorithm, which is the acceptance rejection method. 
okay we will you will implement this to generate a positive standard normal okay from the exponential okay so the, i'm going to implement this algorithm and i told you that uh, because there's there's no go to statement in python because the go to statement is actually badly seen by programmers because if you use it a lot uh, you will get what we call a spaghetti program okay so it will be very difficult to debug and to okay so avoid uh, using the read but we can of course use something equivalent because one to three is a loop here so the loop actually uh, continues as long as this condition is not satisfied okay so we can start actually i do a function i program a function i call pascal you can call it anything so we start uh, by generating an exponential random number okay here i took lambda equal one and then a uniform random number and we test the inequality as long as the inequality is not satisfied we repeat right and when we end the loop we return x okay the loop will ends right and so this is okay so pascal actually here now actually um, generates one random number at a time okay now the vectorization is a little bit it's a little bit more complicated to do that but it's a challenging exercise try to do a vector a vectorized version of this instead of giving one random number at a time try to uh, generate a vector of random numbers okay it will be much more efficient okay but for the time being uh, so <clears throat> now if i want the positive normal okay so i just repeat that i do a loop which is not a very good style so try to avoid it and here okay so uh, here i programmed the pdf which is zero up to zero and then normally uh, exponential actually uh, so this line actually implements the pdf but you don't need actually to do that because it's built in but anyway just uh so we see here actually that our algorithm works very well okay so because there's a very good up, uh, uh, agreement between the histogram in blue and the theoretical pdf in red okay so now as a challenging exercise try to vectorize this code okay and uh Second, so this is done for 0.11. Next exercise is to implement, uh, to generate uh, normal random numbers, standard normal random, uh, normal random numbers by three ways. Okay, okay. so there is first uh, the acceptance rejection from the exponential, okay, that we just did, the box Muller, and the built-in functions okay so here actually uh, i know i have now an algorithm a function i call pascal actually that generates random numbers that are uh, distributed as a positive standard normal okay and i gave you an algorithm to generate a normal from this from half or the positive standard okay by flipping a coin so this algorithm actually <clears throat> I explained it in the lectures. So we generate a positive uh, normal random number that by the my function Pascal, and then I flip a coin. So how to flip a coin? I generate a uniform random number. If the random number is in the first half, take x equal y otherwise take x equal minus one okay it's very 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 simple so and now i'm going to actually do that for i'm going to generate let us do one million okay normal uh, 
I didn't run the yeah sorry I didn't run Pascal I think. so I did that yeah yeah it, it takes some sometimes you see here it's slow because it's not vectorized okay but we get a here in red the theoretical probability okay one over radical two pi times the exponential of minus x square over two so so our algorithm works very well right but it's a little bit slow actually so try to vectorize it in order to improve the performance okay so this concludes so now the other ways the box miller you do it the scipy built-in function used and the numpy you can search for them actually it's not difficult and i gave you some references and the next three homeworks actually i'll not correct them so you will write two algorithms for generating a chi-square distribution with n degrees of freedom for example take n equal five and write an algorithm for generating an f distribution with parameters m and n positive and same thing for the t distribution okay so all the algorithms actually are were well explained in the last video and i hope that by now you have you had time to learn a little bit python but uh, i really encourage you to do these homeworks it's very important because you cannot learn a language just by watching videos okay so that's it this concludes this video uh, in the, the in the next video i'm going to finish chapter one and that's it so see you soon thank you for your attention